school. And um, I have stayed here. This is my seventh year. And I, yeah, love working here, love collaborating with all um, these awesome young people I get to work with. And I absolutely adore garlic, favorite vegetable. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we all love, we love to cook here. So we all love garlic. Um, so if anybody else wants to introduce himself in the chat, we'd love to, love to see it. Let's see. Thank you to everybody who did so far. Awesome. Thank you, y'all. Okay, um, we'll, we'll introduce. You want to introduce verbally? Go for it. I'm trying to, I don't know if you can see us. We're, we're, we're uh, Robert yeah, and Allison. Good. We're Ash's parents. We love the greenhouse program. And, and we think the, the, um, we're excited to see, see the presentation. Yeah, we're having trouble making it big. So you're basically about one and a half by three. And there we go. Hello. Wow. Technology is a challenge, y'all. Technology is a challenge. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate all the support. I'm um, Ash's mom. I'm so proud of Ash and all of you guys, too, for this wonderful program. And awesome. nice to meet you all. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so we're hoping to keep some robust participation throughout our time. What we're going to do next is pivot to a seedling identification game. Um, so I'm going to turn on video on the phone. You know, swap the swap the view, um, and pass this over to Dario. We were gonna start over here, right? Okay. Yeah. So the way this game works, wait, let me let's explain the game. Everybody, come on, let's. We're gonna go. So what's gonna happen is Dario. Here, you wanna look at me so it's a little less awkward. Um, <laughs> Dario is gonna zoom in super close on a seedling. Our greenhouse is full of seedlings right now, and we want you to guess either out loud or in the chat what plant this seedling is gonna become. Bonus points if you can say it in a language besides English. So let's start off with this one. Get, us, get super close. Do we have any guesses coming in? Not yet. Any guesses? Swiss chard. Excellent. You got it, mom. <laughs> this is some rainbow chard. Um, awesome. Cool. Plants look so funny when they're babies. Um, let's let's try out let's try out this one. Cool. Any guesses? Arugula. Excellent guess. It actually arugula looks just like that. This these are collards. They're all brassicas, so they look very similar when they first start to germinate. Um, <laughs> let's pivot it over here. This might be easier. I'll remove this because these ones are a little bigger. Mm. Crowd pleaser. Anybody? Oh, don't show them the name. Anybody know? Anybody know? Basil? Basil. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. We've got um, three different kinds of basil right here, and we've got even more varieties coming. Um, let's head over that way. So some of the some of the plants. Ooh, let's show the legal. This is a big challenge. Big challenge. Okay. Big challenge. If this is not a vegetable, that's all I'm going to tell you. Ooh. Oh, These are some seeds that I snuck from somebody's neighboring garden. Any guesses? It's a flower. Yeah. Sunflowers? They're not sunflowers. It was an awesome guess. They have tiny seeds, so sort of the opposite of a sunflower. These have to start um, with some light, so I put them on top of the soil. Snapdragons? And they're, yes, they're snapdragons. Okay. Um, wow. Um, so yeah, we, we have been trying to have more and more of our plants each year come from seeds that we either got from someone we know, we know the story of, or we saved ourselves. And so we want to show you some crops that we're growing that a few years ago we didn't know about, but people in our community have told us about that we decided to try out this year. We've got some over here. Want to take us over there, Dario? Yep. Let's let's do this one first. Does anybody know? There's a couple different varieties in here. This is a green. Oh, that's a different kind. That's a different oh. kind. We're gonna, they're gonna get confused. 
Anybody have any guesses? This grows very, very tall and it is known in some cases as spinach, um, but it grows in the tropics and we got really excited about it last year. Do you want to tell them what it is, Ari? Yeah, it's Kalalu. Do you want to tell them what you made with it last year? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the dish itself is called Kalalu or referred, uh, the actual plant is referred to as Caribbean spinach. And it's this ba basically this pasty green side dish that um, can be really spicy and is eaten with rice, um, baked, uh, what is it, uh, macaroni pie, and it's really good. So, yeah. Cool. And we've got another green here that we're growing because somebody on this call introduced it to us. I'm gonna zoom in here. Any guesses? This green is, I ate it for the first time a few weeks ago. Uh oh. The label was showing. The label is showing. Oh no, maybe you are already now. Hey, do you want to tell us what it is? Um, Thank you. Do you want to tell us what, what you do with it? <laughs> um, yeah, you, it's very slimy and we need to, we need to do some research to see if we can eat it fresh, but often you'll buy it like dried and then you'll cook it for a long time and you'll wash it really thoroughly and you put vinegar in to like counter some of the sliminess and then you eat it over rice in like a broth with chicken and onion that has also been soaking in vinegar and it's really good. And that's 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 the Lebanese way to eat it, but it's eaten all over the world. We're learning and we're curious to find out how other people. Thank you so much. Um, we're gonna, let's go look at some of these over here. So this is the real focus of today. So you may, we might have a lot of people guessing this one. Um, we're growing 25 different kinds of this, this plant this year. It just started germinating. Anybody know what these are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of our students, you wanna tell us what they are? Yeah. Peppers. Awesome, thank you, Nathan. Um, Nathan, why do we have them growing on the heat map? Because it needs to be 80 degrees to sprout. Yes, so we're growing like 25 different kinds of peppers this year and we're gonna show you soon how we plant them. Do you all wanna come over here and we'll show you, we can show you guys this pepper. Do you guys wanna tell the people on the Zoom what this pepper is, whose, whose pepper it is that we're growing here? So Mr. Wilson is one of the teachers at our school and where did these seeds come from? Vietnam. Yeah, his mom brought them over from Vietnam um, and then has been growing them ever since. And now we have some in the greenhouse. So we love to grow plants, that, um, crops that have stories um, and we love to try growing new stuff every year. And now that we've got that little seedling game, we're gonna tell you a bit more about our program, give you a better tour of the greenhouse and then plant some stuff. Okay, let's go back to the computer. All right, um, let me see, I'm gonna, oh, was the, oh, perfect, you turned the video off, great, thanks, Dario. Um, Okie dokie, so we are going to briefly just tell you what is Epiphany School, which is the school where we are. Yeah. You wanna start us off, Nathan? The Epiphany School is a school for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grader. And then there's a lot of different programs like art minors and majors, which we do different stuff like green club, theater, abstract, DIY, and many other stuff. And there's also the ELC, which is for the little kids where they get to learn and play. Awesome, thank you. And then, cool. Let's um, talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, um, one of the things that has been really um, beneficial for someone like me who's a former Epiphany graduate is the grad support area that um, is right there uh, in the ELC, in the actual ELC building. So basically grad support is a place for uh, graduates, um, Epiphany graduates to come in, get all the things that they need, for instance, like tutoring or supplies for school or help with scholarships and all that. So 
yeah, that's one of the main aspects of post-epiphany um, schooling, I guess, that still uh, is a part of you, so. Yeah, because our school is not, it's not an average school, as you're probably picking up. You know, we're here for a long day. You want to tell us a little bit about how long the day is, Hazel? Um, I think it's like nine hours. Yeah, we have like a nine hour long school day. Yeah, it's, um, it's eight o'clock to um, 5.30 at the latest. Yeah, depending on what you're up to. Yeah. And we do a lot of different stuff, like Nathan was saying, throughout the day. And one of those things is coming to the garden, where we do cooking stuff and gardening stuff. And so we're going to show you a little bit more about some of our gardens. Um, I wanted to briefly screen share for a second and show you what the garden looks like in the other seasons, just because, um, you know, it's not always wintertime, right? And one of the great things about our garden program is that we have this greenhouse, which means that we're able to do what we do year round, but we also have a robust garden. Um, and in this picture, you can see Hazel and her brother Trey, who also comes to the school, um, and a couple other kids having just harvested garlic this past summer. Um, and um, yeah, Dario, do you want to quickly tell us just the gardens? Yeah, so the first garden, one of the bigger ones, is the vegetable garden. And this is where we have um, too many to count at this point uh, raised beds alongside with. Um, yeah, so there's raised beds in here and we grow a majority of our food and also different things like uh, flowers. Um, some highlights are like sunflowers. Um, forget the other ones like zinnias, zinnias echinacea, yeah. echinaceas and all that. And yeah, this is happens to be one of the areas where uh, we do a lot of our garden programming activities. For instance, outdoor uh, cooking, which has been a large part of our summer program. And yeah, and this is Dario um, in the summer of 2020, you know, we're trying to figure out how do we do our garden program during COVID. Dario is the one youth who was working that summer. And we picked a lot of vegetables and gave them away because yeah. we didn't have students in the garden for a while that summer. So we we're giving them away to the community, but that's our veggie garden. Next up is the pollinated garden, which is really um, important for the fifth graders, I believe, because mm -hmm. um, ever since the last couple of years, it's always been that the fifth graders have a large part in designing and actually deciding what's gonna be growing in the pollinator garden. So the purposes of the pollinator garden, as they suggest, is to attract pollinators like hummingbirds, bees, into the general area, right? And um, in the summer, it looks really beautiful with different colors, uh, very different types of plants. That, um, like some of the sunflowers grew up to be like six feet tall. So it's really beautiful in the summer. And yeah. yes. Awesome. We also have a very unique garden, which started off as a, um, I think, a, not a dump, what's it called? A drainage ditch, a drainage yeah. So there was this yeah. drainage ditch that was nasty, full of gross stuff, and we turned it into something very unique that our sixth graders who are here at the table with us are studying this year, called the, the rain garden, yeah. Um, does anybody want to say anything about the rain garden? Yes, we've had a rabbit problem. Yes, the rabbits are here. The rabbits are here. It's very true. There's, and there's also some snakes sometimes, some garden snakes. Yeah. So oh. one of the things is we've we've rehabilitated this area and made it a wild a wild area, which means our wild animals are getting there, which is cool and also sometimes kind of scary. But yeah, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of we've got a lot of cool um, cool plants in this garden that can tolerate being covered up in water. And fun fact, I found my current cat in this garden. He was a stray cat living in this garden. Oh, yeah. um, yep, and so, you know, you never know what you're gonna find in the garden or how it might bless you. Um, also, we've done like a lot of activities in the green garden, like the whole um, Nile River thing that we, we did like last year for the, uh, for the history thing. So it's fun, very fun. Yeah, we do a lot of garden-based learning um, in our, our academic classes at the school, which is super fun. And this is the greenhouse, which we're about to get a live tour of. And so, you know, what we've been talking about this whole time is our focus here is really on food justice and sustainability. Um, and we 
we really want to center youth and what youth want to do, want to grow, want to cook. And we also, like Hazel and Nathan were just mentioning, want to do a lot of hands-on learning projects. So the rain garden is a great example of that. And they were bringing up some stuff we've been doing this year in sixth grade. And guess what? This upcoming week, we're going to be doing an activity about erosion in the rain garden in awesome. science. So excited to do that with y'all. Cool. And we're all about forming sanctuary, uh, sanctuary space for creatures like you were just hearing, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Now we've got some snakes, um, but also for just kind of making an oasis in the city um, because it's nice to have a place to relax in the middle of the city. So that's kind of what our garden program is about and the school's about more broadly. And I think given the time, maybe we should hop on to the greenhouse tour. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to give you all a tour of the greenhouse. We're going to use the phone again. And we wanted to start off over here. So, you all you all can get over there. And Dario can start off and then if you have anything to add about the area or why you like it, you can chime in. So this is a magnificent uh, desert area or succulent area. We have many different types of very dangerous um, succulents, for instance, this agave, which right now doesn't seem that dangerous because most of the spines are kind of like broken off. <laughs> Right well, here. well, I'll say, I'll say, Faye had the brilliant idea to trim the spines oh. so that they wouldn't stop poking us. Yeah, uh -huh. thank you. Usually, it's really dangerous, and um, it makes sense because there's often things like cacti here, different types of succulents. Um, there's some really cool ones that aren't that are actually uh, pleasant to touch, like this one, right? So, yeah. Is there anything you want to add about desert area succulents? It's really fun to look at mm. and to touch because it feels these plants have really bright colors. Yeah, they do have bright colors. So we like to have plants of interest in the greenhouse. One of the purposes here is like when we're studying deserts in fifth grade during the biome unit, we can come in here and look at some plants that really literally live in the desert. Right. Um, cool. Or were we going to head over here next? Yep. This is the tropical plant wall and Aside from these, which are part of the desert area too, there's a lot of different uh, varying tropical plants over here. Um, I think those are orchids, right? Yeah, we've got yeah. some blooming orchids. Very exciting. Very pretty. And then um, monster, I think. Is that yeah, we've got right got some some house plants. Some happy, some not. And and then some uh, plants in the hanging baskets. And then what what were we repotting? Um, had this awesome project that Nathan really helped out a lot with. Which plants were we working on repotting? Um, we um, transferred some plants into new pots, into bigger pots, and then we also painted them on the bottom. So when we get to Nathan's <laughs> pot, he can tell nice. us about it. But they were all our citrus plants. We have a lot of citrus plants, and they were really root bound. Um, and How are the pitcher plants? Oh, they are still alive, Mom. They're still alive. Got these pitcher plants that really want to be repotted, but they're um, doing just fine, you know? Cool. On to the next area. It's the water feature, which um, we hope to have some koi fish in here in the coming years. I know we've been saying it for like at least a year on. <laughs> but um, yeah, the main aspect or feature of the water feature is to cause, I mean, is to create this like atmosphere of relaxation for the kids, which ties into the next area over there where um, anyone, if they want to, can come in here, be surrounded by the plants, right? And also listen to the water droplets from the water feature. Just feel like they're in a, I don't know, kind of like they're in the Amazon rainforest. There's some <laughs> things going on. Yeah, just right here in the And then this is the next area, which is the oh, early, early, early learners, um, Play space. Mm -hmm. So the toddlers and the little kids that go over there to school can come over here, um, sit in these benches. And I think these benches. And they open. They open up so that we can store our, you know, little watering cans and stuff for the kids in here. Oh. <laughs> Oops! I dropped something. Don't be alarmed. Everything's fine. And yeah, so everything here is edible. So safe for the children to touch and eat. And this is the living wall, as you can see. 
has, um, I don't want to spoil it, but it has a very important thing for one of the activities we're going to be doing later. And yeah, so everything here is edible. And then over here is the um, scented geranium alongside the Yeah, we got some more peas. Got some more yeah. peas over there. Do you want to? Hazel, do you want to tell us a tiny bit about the living wall real quick? So just to quickly say, the sixth graders, it's called an assertion. The sixth graders have been um, working on revitalizing this area. Nathan's group is working on painting a new bench top, um, which is something, Nathan's an excellent painter. So he's been working on that. Soon we'll have a new bench top here with a great pattern on it. And then we started all of these herbs that we grow over here from seed, the sixth graders did, and then they watched them get big, they transplanted them. And then finally, Hazel got to be the person who put all of these uh, plants up in the living wall. Okay, so this is, the majority of this is like the nasturtium. Mm -hmm. um, this is some purple basil. And at the bottom uh, is some cilantro. And we did this, I think we planted these in the, in the wall last Thursday. And we, we cleaned them out so that to be at like any, like they wouldn't, they wouldn't die or anything. So we cleaned them out and then after we were done cleaning, we put them in and they've been in a living wall. These plants have been in a living wall for maybe a couple of days. Yeah. And in those couple of days, they really perked up and they're looking How do you awesome. water? That's a great question. Um, do you want to tell them, Hazel? So um, if you wanted to water like these plants right here, you wouldn't actually water like water directly inside. You would pour water like right here. And if hold on, let me take this out. And if you see these little holes right here, it's the drainage. So it doesn't overwater them. Okay. And then it goes down into this bottom here. So it doesn't fall below these plants. Cool. Oh, you want to demonstrate? Yeah, we can take a moment to demo the watering. That was such a good idea, Nathan. All right. Let me, let me Do you have it on shower? I'll yeah, get out of the way. OK, perfect. <laughs> so yeah, so you if you move the plant, if you want it to be easier, you would place it down here. And then you would have does it have a kink? Classic gardener's dilemma, the kink in the hose. Who here can relate? Yeah. Okay. And then you would keep on doing this until it reaches the hole. And when it reaches the hole, it trickles down into the row below and waters mm -hmm. those plants. Uh-huh. Place it back in here. Yep. And so you can just water straight from the top and it'll trickle down. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. That's great. And then what we mostly do with the other half of the greenhouse is grow food. We've got some spinach and peas happening. And then what we're really focusing on today is all of our seedlings. And in a moment, we're going to show you um, how we seed peppers and talk to you a little bit about our favorite seeds. Um, so we just jump right into that. Cool. So you know, we've been talking at you all for a long time. So just pause for a moment. I'm going to check and see if anything's happening in the chat that I should answer. I want you all to think to yourselves, what are you all really excited to grow in your own gardens or eat this upcoming growing season? And feel free to share in the chat something that you're really excited about growing or eating in this upcoming growing season. And then check the chat, see how it's all going over here. Um, all right. Awesome. Okay. Awesome, cool. We'll be growing all of these things that you are bringing up in the chat in our in our garden too. That's awesome. Cool. Okay, I think that we should hear from Dario about what he's really excited about growing this year. And you all, you can keep on sharing. Um, oh, you should have got the packet. I got the packet, Dario. Look, we're on top oh, sure. of it. We got the packet. Okay, so tell us, Dario. So these are some uh, northern adapted pigeon peas. I don't know if you can see that, but um, so pigeon peas don't usually grow in this climate. It's too, far too cold to be grown. I mean, yeah, this climate is way too cold to be growing these type of seeds. Um, but they're really integral towards Cavardian culture and a lot of different places in the Caribbean too, incorporated right into their food. So pigeon peas, especially one of my favorite dishes, would be I guess kombu, which is this kind of uh, Cavardian stew. 
and one of the main aspects, uh, one of the main vegetables in it that gives the most of the flavor is pigeon moss. So I'm excited to bring something from my culture, grow it here, and then hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> be able to actually put it into put it into some stew, right? And then yeah. eat it the same day. So yeah, yeah, Thanks. literally can't wait. Yeah, can't wait. It's gonna be an adventure because we've never grown it before. And we found out about these seeds through this company called True Love Seeds. Um, and we have heard the story of where these came from. And they apparently have been able to reach maturity in New York. So we hope that even though we're a little bit colder than New York, that it works out for us. We're gonna start them in the greenhouse in a couple of weeks, transplant them outside, and they might grow to be four feet tall. So we've got to really be careful with our spacing. Dorchester is pretty warm in the summer. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. So hopefully it all works out. And so we're really excited also about growing peppers more broadly. And today we're going to be seeding peppers. So we're going to show you how we seed peppers. Um, let's just review. Everybody tell us what you're seeding and get in the spot where your seeds are. I think you're over here, Hazel. Yeah, right? I'm seeding the red cherry pepper or the... Um, I'm, I'm planting the red cherry pepper or the cherry, the sweet pepper, if you want to say that. And um, it goes from year to year, so one, two, three, four, four of them. Mm -hmm. And um, so we yeah. love these sweet peppers, and we just planted these today, so they're not ready to grow just yet. Exactly, exactly. So we did, we planted these red carmine peppers together as like a dry run, and now we're gonna finish up this tray. We're really careful with our labeling because a lot of different people come in the greenhouse. So we wanna be super careful with our labeling, um, which means that we um, try to grow only one thing per row when we think about our rows at, coming this way. Uh -huh. And so if it says red cherry here, and then there's an arrow and it says red cherry here, and there's an arrow, you know that this row, this row, this row, and this row are all red cherry. This is the seed packet. These ones came from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, which my uncle in North Carolina actually grows for sometimes. He didn't grow these seeds, but he told me about the seed network. And yeah, Hazel, if you want to go ahead and open it up, you can. First, poke your little holes, though. And Dario, you want to tell us what you're going to plant? Cayenne peppers. Um, these we saved from last season's peppers. And then these ones are from Johnny's Selected Seeds. And we're going to see which ones, like, this one says that it has a 95% germination rate. So that's one of the things we're going to also try to think about, like which ones actually sprout up and see if the saved ones um, do well. So, yeah. And since we didn't protect our um, the flowers of the cayenne peppers that we're growing in the garden from pollination, there could be some cross-pollination with a different type of pepper. So we don't know if we're going to really get a cayenne <laughs> pepper ours or not. It's going to be an adventure, which is why we wanted to grow some from a company um, and then this year, we're going to protect some of the flowers from all of our peppers so we know it'll produce a, the right thing. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and start start making your little holes. Um, and then Nathan, you want to show us what you're I'm, gonna be planting? I'm planting Bengals blend sweet peppers. And this is how it looks. It said that there's red, orange, and chocolate colors. And it says to germinate, it takes 10 to 14 days. And it can reach up to two feet. Excellent. Um, so we, and this one came from high mowing seeds. So we get our, our seeds from a lot of different companies. Um, and we also are trying to save more of our own. We try and grow a broad variety of sweet and spicy peppers with different stories. And <clears throat> when we're planting, the first thing we do is we make all of our holes first. We don't want to make the holes too deep. The hole should be about twice as the rule of thumb, if you don't know how deep to plant your seed, is you want it to be twice as deep as the seed is big. So we make some sort of shallow holes for our seeds. When we're planting these trays, we want the soil to be moist. Um, it did dry out a little bit, but underneath it's nice and moist still in the time since we put the soil in here. Moist, but not soaking wet. Um, and for the ones that we saved the seed of, we, we like to plant like three or four because we don't know if it's gonna germinate or not. So Dario is gonna go ahead and put for the cayenne saved ones, like three or four seeds in each cell because we don't know if they're gonna come up. And then we're gonna, we're gonna really hope that Johnny's isn't lying to us about the 98% germination rate. We're just gonna gamble and put one seed in each of those holes. Huh. Um, we did find out that peppers and a lot of other seeds 
um, are social, you know, they like to germinate with their friends. So we've been noticing on our trays, on the ones where we planted more than one um, seed per cell, they came up faster. And so that's, oh, a cool nice. thing. that's a cool thing to note. But the problem is who does the transplanting, the potting up of these? It's me and the students and the volunteers. And if we plant too many too close together, then you have to do all this really detailed untangling of roots and stuff, which is just too challenging. So yeah. even though they're not as happy when they germinate by themselves, we find it's easier to transplant them when they come up alone, which is why we seed our peppers in this garden um, in with just one plant per cell is the is the goal. Awesome. Now when you're so, planting, is, are you guys having wet soil or dry soil? What's your, what do you find works best for you guys? We go for moist and then we water afterwards. So this is looking pretty dry right now because we filled the tray a little while ago before the Zoom and it dried out a bit. So usually it'd be a little bit wetter, but yeah, we, we do like very moist, but not soaking wet. We find if, it get, if it's soaking wet when we plant that um, the seeds have a higher chance of rotting and I don't know, all the drainage is all messed up. And then if it's totally dry, it just poofs back up at you, you know, you water for the first time you get that terrible poof of soil. So we're going for moist. Um, <laughs> What did you say, Nathan? Yeah, since from the from the seed packet, we're gonna put one seed in each cell. Okay. You can go ahead and put one seed in each cell. Um, has anybody else been doing any seeding yet this season? Um, Kendall has. One of your one of my mom's friends has been doing some seeding. Nice. Yes, Aber and Kendall, they're doing uh, flowers. Awesome. Um, yeah. Cool. It's a little cold out still to be, I think. I was wondering about kale and Swiss chard. What do you think? Outdoors. I think if, if oh, outdoors. Um, yeah. I'm going to wait a little bit, but, you know, your climate zone is a little warmer than ours, so it could be a yeah. good thing to try out. Yeah. So I'm going to be planting a seed in mine that or you want to hold it, Dario? Um, I'm going to be planting some seeds that have a pretty fun story. Um, my friends got these seeds from their friends, who's a farmer, and they came in these funny little pockets. And I and my friend was like, "Hey, I don't have time to grow these this year. Can you start them for me?" And I was like, "Sure, why not? If we get to keep some for the garden." So now we've got even more types of peppers coming for the garden. They come in these teeny little packets, huh. and I had to pick them up the other night in the middle of the night almost because uh, we couldn't find a time to meet up. So my friend gave them to another friend of mine and then I went and picked them up from there. So I just think it's really cool, like the stories of where you get seeds because the timing matters. We're starting the peppers right now so that the peppers are ready to go in the spring. And we, we can't mess up the date, you know? If I waited two weeks until I hang out with my friend next time, the peppers won't be ready when it's time to plant them in the garden, which would be very sad. Mm. So that's why the timing matters so much because everything takes a different amount of time to grow. And we've been doing a lot of careful math about that. So it makes something really, that something that seems really simple, actually it's fairly complicated, you know? Going yeah. at night, <laughs> getting seeds, having to plan out, doing the math to see when you should plant them. Yeah, it took me like maybe five hours to make our pepper planting plan, honestly, because we're growing so many different kinds and I had to do so much math around, um, you know, when we're going to be planting everything, how many we want in the end, how many pots we need, how much soil we need. So gardening involves a lot of math, which is pretty fun because that means I get to work with math classes on garden stuff sometimes. Huh. When, is um, the Swiss, when are the Swiss chard seedlings going out? You know... Something I didn't say is that those seedlings are, Jory, you want to cover up yours? Those seedlings are actually the seedlings that Annabelle, who is one of the people coordinating this conference, is starting for their garden on a rooftop in, on the Boston Medical Center. Okay. And I don't know when they're planting those out. Um, so we share our space with other people. So what you see us doing now is we're covering up the seeds with a good amount of soil and patting it down pretty good so that afterwards we can water. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions about seeding or about peppers or about, you know, anything we've talked about so far? 
Have you found when you put peppers in the ground, if you have a spicy one next to a non-spicy one, have you noticed any differences in terms of how they grow or if they affect each other? Um, not that I've noticed, but honestly, we do sort of, one of the ways we plant out our garden is with a focus on like it making a lot of sense to anybody who comes by. So I don't put sweet and spicy peppers in the same bed because then a student or a parent who comes to pick from the garden might get an unpleasant surprise. Um, who here, anybody either on the Zoom or here in the greenhouse has eaten a pepper that was spicier than you anticipated? How did it go? What was it like? What was your experience? I just made myself like in my living room. Did that happen to you here in the garden or somewhere else? In the garden. Do you remember which kind it was? Um, we had a there was a like um, moderate, spicy, very spicy, and then I picked like very spicy, I think, and then it was like red from like the bed with it. Wow. Wow. That, huh. I think you might have had a bite of a habanero pepper. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But like, you had a jalapeno? It was like, I had three. Wow. I don't, I think I was eating them so fast that it didn't really hit. But I was six and I got there just regular peppers. I started crying once it, like, I couldn't even feel my tongue because it was so oh. hot. And I drank a lot of water. I went through like four bottles of water. And Wow. Wow. So I guess that didn't happen in the garden. What about you, Dario? Did you eat anything that was too spicy in the garden? Yeah. Um, I ate the bird pepper. Oh, wow. So mind you, the bird pepper is maximum like this big. I think you have some dried ones there. Yeah, did I, did I bring them with me? Did I remember? Oh, I guess I left them. But yeah, they're like this And I was under the impression that I could take some um, that, that was spicy because it was that small, right? But then I still found myself underneath tap for like five five minutes. This <laughs> was just straight drinking water. So uh, it was it was interesting. At least I got one, uh, I got I got um, big to try it too. So that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, we've we've had um gotta say we've had a lot of pranks with the hot peppers in the garden. We've had a lot of I had a student prank his mom real bad. He was like, this isn't spicy at all. And then she she ran ran off to the car to decompress and scream a little bit because it was so hot. So oh, gotta wow. be careful with your hot peppers. Have you yeah, ever heard of milk? Um, yeah, milk is a great way to to kind of calm down from something that's hot. Awesome. So that's the story of our pepper seeding. The next thing that we wanted to um, do for you all is talk to you about our cooking in the in our garden program because the reason why we grow food is to eat it um, and. So we're going to do a little demo of picking a few of our crops, and then we're going to assemble some tacos. We already ate some, um, but we're gonna assemble some more tacos and get to eat eat our tacos with our lettuce, and then answer any other questions y'all might have. So why don't we kick it off with picking a little bit of lettuce? How does that sound to y'all? You ready? Yeah. Okay. So. We then, yeah, let's grab, grab a bowl, grab a little pair of scissors. We already put some lettuce. Okay, would you want to, you're gonna use your hand or some scissors? What do you prefer for picking lettuce, Hazel? Hands. hands, everybody likes hands? Okay, tell us, somebody tell us, how do we pick lettuce? What are, what's our method? Well, first you have to like, you pick them one by one, like individually. So you go all over the bottom. So, does anybody know why we're just picking one leaf off of each plant? Yeah, we're trying to keep in mind that um, uh, taking a really good, I mean, taking a really good amount of um, leaves from a plant that's doing not too well is probably going to come up. So we're trying to like, if we're getting one leaf from here, it's probably enough there just to make sure that we keep on producing. Um, instead of just harvesting um, I, I don't know what happened. Somebody must have been picking and messed up and sliced that with a scissor. I think the leaf is fine, but it's a little dirty, so maybe we don't want to eat it. Um, it's a great mix you've got there. Yeah, uh, Johnny Selected Seeds Greenhouse Five Star, or what is it? Five Star Greenhouse Lettuce Mix. Yeah, I love Johnny's for their lettuce, lettuce mixes. Is anybody else growing any greens right now? <laughs> 
We still got kale from last fall. Wow. Yeah. Cool. You ate some kale this morning? Yeah. So did I. I ate some kale this morning. Um, I love kale. So we'll be growing kale outside soon. Um, and we've been doing a lot of different stuff with the lettuce in the greenhouse. Um, who here can say something besides tacos we did with the lettuce? Um, you want to tell us anything? We made a salad. We caught all the lettuce in the salad um, with like tomatoes and I think cucumbers. And then we made salad dressing with it. Mm -hmm. Like ranch and a taco. Yeah. yeah. And, and we made some some croutons too. Which team were you on for that? Did you make the croutons, Hazel? No, we, I, I was thinking about saying that, but I can't remember what we were doing. But um, we were doing like, what was it? We made croutons. Mm -hmm. I was not the one who made them. Um, I was the one cooking lettuce. Oh, nice. And we made lettuce, croutons, just a salad. I was the one making the croutons. We had white bread. And then one of them was paparita, like a spicy one. Another one was like a garlic and <coughs> one. And then we wanted to like experiment with like <coughs> cinnamon bread. And then that one was like a sweet one, not to be with the salad, but like as a little snack. And it actually used to sell good. Yeah, so we, every week, something cool about our school is we do this big food giveaway where <clears throat> we have salvaged food that we then donate to anybody who wants them and so as a garden program we love to snag any free fruit from there we get some loaves of bread that are getting stale and we make croutons to go with our salad and then we were like what else should we do with all this lettuce um and we decided we should make some tacos i think we've got all, enough lettuce for our tacos what do y'all think should we go pick some cilantro I think I have more than enough more than enough okay um so we'll cut up the lettuce in a second we can go ahead and put the lettuce on um maybe put the bowls by the cutting board and Let's go pick a little bit of cilantro. Who wants to come pick cilantro? Okay, here comes Hazel. So while you're picking the cilantro, do you want to tell us what else went in the salsa, Hazel? What else went in the salsa? Um, so we put tomatoes, um, we put onions, garlic, lemon, and peppers. Peppers, we put some lime and um, Dario, do you want to tell us where the garlic came from? Uh, yeah, we picked it from uh, last year's uh, growing season. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we do is dry it. So we put it over there, right? so, uh, the ELC on an uh, overhead, not bin, but overhead area, right? So let them dry for a couple months so that flavor can really like come up. So yes, yeah, so it's really strong right now. Yeah, super strong. Do you remember in the summer, Nathan, the garlic taste test we did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we tasted the garlic, and then I also think we tasted like the, I don't remember what it's called, the flower bud. Yeah, the flower of the garlic is called a garlic scape. It tastes exactly the same. And so, what about the dried one? Dried one? It tastes, it tastes better. I think, I think that, um, I, well, I disagree about the scape one. I think the scape I think that's probably got enough cilantro. A little bit different. Perfect. And then the green onion definitely tasted uh, a lot more raw. The green garlic? Yeah, the green, yeah, yeah. The green garlic definitely tastes than anything. But yeah. Awesome. Cool. So now we've got some cilantro that we can incorporate into our salsa. And I realized I made a grave error earlier and I didn't invite Nathan to talk about the pot that he decorated. Do you want to tell us about your pot while we start putting up? So just to circle back to our decoration, Nathan decorated this. The plant was it's called calamondin. It's a calamondin. Calamondin orange. It's like small, like this small, but it's like really soft. That's is good. And we got to transplant it for a bigger pot. And then we have to um, paint it. So the first thing we painted was stars um, on the top. And then we put clouds right here and like a waterfall. Then there was mountains, trees, and in the back, in the back, we put mm. it's a lovely pot. We put like flower bells and like flower bells and like 
Awesome. Thank you for telling us about awesome. it. Yeah. Thank you for telling us about it. Yeah. We're getting a funny echo. I don't know if it's on my end or on y'all's end. We're getting but... a funny echo. I don't know if it's on my end or on y'all's end. But... I may mute some of the, the guests. I may mute some of the guests. See if that helps. See if that helps. Does that help? Does that help? Is it still echoing? Ooh, this echo is hilarious. Okay, we'll pause on the talking, but we're gonna cut up some of our stuff and make some tacos, and hopefully we can get the echo sorted out. Is it still echoing? No, I think we fixed it. Perfect. Okay, um, we're on the simple taco. That's what we're, and the Q and A is up next. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and make our tacos. We cut up some lettuce. We can put the lettuce in our bowl, and then let me see who wants to cut up the cilantro. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll cut up a little bit more lettuce, and then I've got another knife here. Let's see. So we do a lot of cutting up food with knives in the garden. And obviously sometimes there's mistakes and things go wrong, but um, students are always pretty surprised. They're like, do we really get to use a knife right now? And what do you all think? Do you think it's safe to use a knife? Yeah, if you, if you know, know knife safety. safety. Yeah, if you know knife safety. Yeah, you point, point it down when you're walking. What are some other knife safety things we do? Um, if you, make sure there's no one next to you to like go like that. Or like, make sure you're not doing sudden hand movements. Like, yeah. When you're cutting, you have to go like this. Up and down oh, like also that. always sit down. Like, um, yeah, be be sort of still, either standing or sitting. And also, if you're not using your knife, it should be on the table. You know, we don't we don't gesticulate with our knives. You know, the knife is on the table unless you're actually using it. Um, and we are careful with our finger placement. So usually we try to keep our fingers far away. Nathan is pretty skilled at cutting things up. So his, his fingers are kind of close, but if somebody's just learning how to use a knife, I make them put their other hand out of the way. And we're just cutting up with one, one knife there. Or sorry, yeah, one knife and no hand in the way. Um, I think that's probably good. What do you think? Nice and small? I mean, keep going if you want to. You think it could be smaller? Pretty good. You like big chunks of lettuce? Okay. Yeah, get it. Those couple, couple last big ones. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Okay. Put that in that bowl, and then. Mm -hmm. And then we can make a couple more tacos. And while we're wrapping this up, um, does anybody have any? questions, comments, ideas, anything else you wanted to know about our garden program, our school, about what us. we do here, about us? Any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself too. I, I did mute some folks just to make sure that, see if they were the source of the echo. echo. Feel free to unmute. Okay, because we're not gonna eat that much more. I actually have a question. I was wondering what you all learned about gardening or growing food that you didn't know before you started this. Like, what did you find su most surprising once you got involved? Um, I was telling, I think I was telling you this, Ingles, but um, the way in which it feels like getting uh, growing food is just growing free food, you know? Um, I was really surprised when uh, Ingles told me that, like, yeah, you could save these seeds and then grow more food next time around. Um, and most of them are gonna come back up. So you grow food to eat food and then you grow food to make more food for you to eat later. And I was just like, there's no way that this could be a thing. Um, like at cost, for, for the most part, like cost food. So yeah, that was the most uh, surprising thing. Yeah, we had a cool conversation where Dario was basically like, how is this still legal? You know, like the <laughs> so many things that are pure and good have been taken away from us and we can still save seeds and grow food. Like that's crazy. So it was a, that was a cool conversation. Um, let's, so we're gonna incorporate the cilantro into the salsa, which is a kind of dangerous thing to do because I know at least two people on this call hate cilantro. So always check with your friends before you add the cilantro to see if anybody hates it because it can always be on the side. 
Sometimes cilantro tastes like soap. Honestly, cilantro, I did not like it for a little while. You like it now? Yeah, but there were, I only didn't like it because there was one time where I was out like eating I had a really, I think someone didn't know they cut it like right. So I had a really, like, I had a lot of cilantro. Too much cilantro, yeah. Wow, that sounds terrible. For me, um, cilantro is like 50 50. It depends what you put it on. Because sometimes it can be good, but sometimes it's bad. Very, very fair point. Um, so do you all want to make another taco? Show show everybody how it's done. So we already ate tacos before, but we'll go ahead and make some more. Um, Honestly, I like it. You want one of everything on your taco? Do you want a fresh plate? I might have another spare. Maybe. Is there one more plate? Yeah. You could. Yeah, you can always add what you ate before to your taco. Yeah, it's a great idea. And you know what? This is actually beef. Um, we were thinking about chicken, but then you all asked for beef, so I got beef yeah. instead. I get I get those mixed up, but they still taste good. So I actually put the sour cream first chicken. Yeah. I um so we seasoned we seasoned our beef with some herbs we dried from the garden, got some oregano. We made a homemade adobo mix out of herbs and um, garlic powder that we made last year, so I seasoned it with that. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about the salt. Um, Nathan made the Nathan made the guac. Um, I don't think anything from the garden went into it this time, but we are we do have an avocado tree in here, so maybe someday we'll get some avocados. Um, and the salsa, like we were saying, in the summer we do a lot of salsa challenges where we just use anything from the garden to make a salsa. But since it's winter, we're not growing any peppers or tomatoes right now, so we got those from the store. Um, and yeah, we've got some beautiful, beautiful taco assemblage happening. We do a lot of cooking straight out of the garden. What are some other things that you all have cooked from the garden that you've enjoyed making? Um, I remember this one thing that was Ethiopian. It was very fun to make. Like um, mm -hmm. taking the peppers and just like taking all the seeds out, stuffing it, and making oh, the sauces. It was so good and it was so fun and engaging to make. And I learned about um, like different cultures in the making. And like, mm -hmm. I didn't know that some of my classmates are Ethiopian. Like, you are going to be Ethiopian? I had no clue. Yeah. So it was, it was fun to just learn about different cultures and make different things. Thank you so much for sharing, Hazel. One of the best dishes I think we made was like um, the smoothie challenge. We made it like, each year in fifth grade, we made it, and now in sixth grade, we did it again. And like for me, the best, the best food that we made ever was the banana ones because it tastes so good as a smoothie. Yeah, and we we got a lot of. We had this great day a little while ago where for some reason the food giveaway had so many berries, like way too many, so we froze them all, and we've been making a ton of smoothies since then, which has been really fun. Yeah. I remember we were we made ice cream one time, but like um we couldn't get to eat it because like because <gasps> of COVID the school like kind of closed. Yeah, that's been a challenge. So we've had sudden school closure. I'm sure you all can imagine it's been stressful. Um, and I'm sorry that you didn't get to try that ice cream. Let me make it up to you, Nathan. We'll make some more ice cream. Do you remember why we did it during Green Club? Why I bought an ice cream machine? Uh, it was in the summer, so like it was fine. We made like. What did we put from the garden into the ice cream? Oh, we put like, uh, for one of them was peppermint, I think. Mm -hmm. For like a mint ice cream. And then we put like, I think we made a berry one for like the ice cream. And yeah. It was like ice cream based off like um, natural ice cream. Yeah, Dario led that cooking activity actually. Yeah. I'd say um, one of the more fun things I've uh, participated in when it comes to cooking in the greenhouse. It's probably been uh, the like annual pizzas that we make, you know, the garden pizzas. Um, that's definitely excited to do that again. But yeah, garden pizzas are always a highlight for me. Yeah, that's pretty fun. We always, I love to scandalize children by telling them that yeast goes into bread products and it's a fungus. <laughs> um, yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> Did some of you just find this out for the first time right now? I made bread before, so I like I've made homemade bread with my mom before. So my mom always says that it's a and she says it's like the great designer. You didn't know, but it's a good taste in terms of it is. Yeah, so yeast is a unicellular fungus. It's just one cell, and you got to be really careful with it so you don't kill it. Um, so yeah, we all, we make our own dough, which is super fun, and then um, you get to shape the dough and then pick whatever you want from the garden to put on top of the pizza. And the only thing not from the garden is usually the flour, the yeast, the olive oil, the and the cheese. Besides that, you know, you can make your own sauce real quick in the garden. It's a lot of good options. Um, these tacos are good. Hi, Vic. Um, thanks for stopping by. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of that's kind of all the stuff that we wanted to talk to you all about. If anybody else has any questions um, or wants to make any comments, we would we've got a little more time. But besides that, we're we're pretty much through with our talk. What was y'all's favorite part of what we said? Or does anybody have a question? I have a question. Okay, go for it. Well, so you were talking about the peppers, seeds yeah. mm -hmm. that that might be cross contaminated. Yes, yeah, exactly. it, it never really occurred to me, which is really odd. But how do the seed companies keep their vegetable seeds from? It, it, they must have a really um, enforced kind of environment so that there's no cross pollination. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked about that. So actually, so seed keeping is something we've been learning a lot about in the past couple of years, largely inspired by True Love Seeds, the company um, <clears throat> that does a lot of seed keeping. And they are so cool because unlike other seed companies who are kind of like where our seeds came from is a secret and also like don't reproduce these, we own these seeds. They're like, no, no, no. These seeds have been passed for generations. They've come from all over the world. And we want you to keep these seeds actually because their um, company slogan is seed keeping is an act of true love for our ancestors and for generations to come. And so they include directions about how to keep the seeds. And they tell you how far you need to space the seeds so that you don't get that cross pollination. And it okay. depends on what it is. So peppers and tomatoes and eggplants all self pollinate most of the time, but you wanna make sure that an errant bee doesn't come by and accidentally mess up the pollination. Um, so for those who only need to isolate by 25 feet, but that would mean each variety of pepper would need to be 25 feet away from each other, okay. which is super hard to do in an urban farm. It's just not gonna sure. happen. I can't sure. grow each of my kinds of peppers 25 feet away from each other. My garden's not that big. Yeah. And for us, the stuff, it needs to be even further because, or you need to hand pollinate yourself. So for something like a cucumber, um, those have a certain type of bee um, or wasp that pollinates them and it has to visit them. And so if you've got a whole bunch of cucumbers by each other, there's no chance you're not getting all of that pollination mixed up. Um, so okay. what you can do, especially with peppers, which we're gonna try out this year, is, is cover, um, and you can like surround a blossom um, once the bud has formed with something like um, a, a loose cheesecloth, probably wouldn't work, but some sort of like durable cloth um, that's somewhat see-through, you can just wrap it around the flower. And I need to look into this because obviously okay. I haven't tried it before, I'm confused. But the idea is that that will protect the flower from a visiting bee and then the pepper can grow to maturity inside whatever sack you put over the flower. And then you'll know it hasn't been um, pollinated. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anybody else, any questions? Anybody have anything they wanted to add? There is one in the chat. One question. Oh, no. Has any of the students decided that gardening farming is what they want to do in life after they, they've had these wonderful <laughs> experiences together? Um, you want to talk about that, Dario? Yeah. I guess I'm kind of thinking about it. Um, I guess mo mostly because I'm a junior right now and um, I'm learning about the college application process. And um, some of the schools that I'm looking towards are like, agricultural and techni te technical schools or uh, technology schools. So um, seeing that or knowing that I've had this uh, background in like working, being a lead garden intern at um, Epiphany's garden program, I, it's like, I'm like, 
I could do it. I could not do it. I don't know. But it's definitely making me think more about it. Um, seeing if I want to get into that. But, yeah. Either of you, what do you, what role do you think gardens will play in your life when you're older? Probably if I want to inform someone on something, like, I don't think, well, I don't know what I want to, like, as a job yet. So maybe, maybe I might be as a country when I go off to I like, I don't know, I might be a fellow here. <laughs> wow. That'd be nice. Do you want to tell them what teaching fellows are? Oh, um, teaching fellows are like teacher assistants, and like some fellows have their own, um, well, it's not explaining it. Like, it's basically a teacher's house. Mm -hmm. So they kind of just like they're in that class. Like Mr. Jones' teacher fellow, teaching fellow is Miss Bailey. So she kind of just like. She helps wash the kids, or like she might, if Mr. Jones is helping someone and he can't get to everyone, Miss Daly will like get to other people and help them. Just so, like, and he's like a teacher assistant. To add on, it's like a two years, um, it's like two years, and then like you don't get, you don't get like, I don't think you get paid, you, but you like, get like a, an AmeriCorps stipend, yeah. you know, so you get some money and free housing, but yeah, you're learning how to be a teacher. They give you like, they give you a fellow house. It's like outside the green, it's like near the greenhouse, like right there, if you look outside. And then like, it's like a free house and a free room for you. Mm -hmm. And so we try to get a lot of our graduates to come back and do this fellowship because they make the school so much better. And so I have a big dream that at some point, one of my students, because, you know, the garden program hasn't been along, around for that long, but that eventually one of my students who's graduated from college will come back and be a garden teaching fellow in the garden here and maybe even take over my job and be the person who runs the garden program. Because we know that um, the, best, the best person to do the job is often someone who experienced it when they were a student. So many of our leadership positions at the school now are um, people who used to be students at the school. Yeah. So that's cool, Hazel. I didn't know you thought you might want to be a teaching fellow. Maybe uh, maybe you'll be a garden teaching fellow. Let's see if I can convince her. Circle back around and um, math is hard sometimes, 10 years or something. Um, yeah. I think, well, math is kind of easy. Math is kind of easy. Yeah, it depends. It depends. So sure. I, I do have a question for the kids, even though, you know, they're still growing and, and have years until they're settled down. But do you, has this program inspired you to have your own home gardens, um, you know, as you move on? Um, my grandma um, loves gardening. My grandma loves gardening. So um, she has a lot of different like cactuses and flowers in our backyard and like in our house. So there's like kind of a garden already. Okay. Um, I was inspired to like garden like I was really 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 into gardening to the point where um I actually created a garden with mixed angles in my backyard mm -hmm. and sadly like um there were we had to move so we couldn't bring it with us uh, so, so yeah. it was kind of sad but yeah. well, we're gonna grow more yeah. stuff in pots on your porch this year I hope yeah, and also people were just like treating it like it was a gigantic trash can. So it was just like, it was annoying. But yeah. then we also had to move and we couldn't take all of that with us. So we just had to, you know, had to get the landlord to just kind of just, I guess, take out the dirt. We did get some <laughs> dirt to like some, um, what was it called again? It was like this place where you can just take the dirt and oh, yeah. like, um, just use it and cool. recycle the dirt. Cool. So that's what we did, but it was kind of yeah. sad leaving it. Yeah, it it's so sad. It's so sad. And I love that you, um, you're still growing. You've still got some plants in your house and you'll have even more. So that's the thing. But my cat really likes to eat. Yeah, them. it's a struggle. Cats, cats and plants. Who Am I right? Cats and plants, it's an ongoing struggle. 
Um, yeah. Were you going to answer that question too, Dario? Yeah, I said most definitely. I didn't start off thinking that I was really into growing food and um, into gardening. Um, I, I think my view and perception on it has definitely changed. So I think one of the goals is definitely to have, um, uh, oh no, I'm going to start off with a little garden and then see where that goes. So okay. That's the land. Yeah. Definitely start growing. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so wanted to thank everybody today for joining us. Thank you guys for a wonderful and informational talk. But at this point, we do have to end so that everyone can go on to the next Zoom. But thank you so much for all that you taught us today. Yeah, it was great. What a wonderful to see you guys. And good program. Yes, thank yeah. you all. Thank you. Thanks, have everybody, for Sunday. joining Thank you, everybody. Have a Bye -bye. great day. Bye. 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 Bye.